looks like Herbie has uh, white tires at the back, but he doesn't. I pulled a Steve OD. I did not glue my tires, so I had a blowout, but it didn't come off the rim. Okay, step 20, we have to install the, sh the rear shock onto the shock tower. And just be careful and count the holes. And here we have to go on the second hole inside. And this is on the outer hole. So when you're looking at your, you have three holes, that one, and we have to go to that one. Okay, there we go. One side installed. It is a little tricky to actually screw that because the screw goes on here and the body is kind of in your way. But you can actually screw it from the bottom. You do have access. So when you put your screwdriver, the easiest way to do it is install the bottom one first. And then you should have no issues. And then you install the top one. There we go, both shocks are installed. Now we're going to build the front one and install the front ones. The front one for this kit are exactly the same as the rear, except there are um, silver and not gold. That's the only difference. Okay, for the front, there's going to be a little bit difference because, because the screw uh, that goes on the bottom is a little longer and uh, you, there is some different spacers so this is what i was talking to you about a while back is the color of the screws like you can notice here the picture is white and the screw is white and here they darken the picture it's a grayish and the, the screw is actually dark and uh, that's a B, uh, bc6 and bc7 and you can see bc6 is the long one which goes on the bottom so let's put that together and we're going all the way up to here and on this hole. So we're going to go all the way up to here and that hole in the bottom. There we go. The front is all installed. Now I have suspension. Now it's time for electronic step 23. So I gotta get a bunch of uh, screws and ball connectors and let me get the electronics out and I'll show you a little tip of what I have also to help uh, make this a little faster. Okay, so to do the next step 23, uh, you need to get your remote out. I have a Spectrum, a DX4S. Uh, you need a receiver. And you need to bind that with yours and connect everything together. You don't need the motor right now, but what you need to do is find the center of this when it's onto your when it's onto your remote. So I have a little trick for that. And I'm gonna replace all these items. One, two, three, four, all these items with two little items. And this is it. So the only thing you need is what's called a servo tester. You get this for about less than $5 and this saves a lot of time. You can use a 1S to actually supply uh, supply power to this. It's 4.8 to 6 volts. As long as you don't go over 6 volts, you'll be okay. So then you just uh, get yourself a little battery pack. I put 4S and uh, 4 uh, uh, AA's in there. Uh, and then you just connect it and then it comes on and then you hit the select button here and you can go from manual neutral or auto auto is actually going to sweep from one side to the other so let's connect the uh, servo in there and see what's going to do so theoretically to put the horn on i need to find the center so the black one is always your ground and the orange one or sometimes it's actually white that's your signal one so it doesn't matter, this one has three of them. You can put it on any, any servos, any, any height. So right now I got it on manual and I'm turning the, 
the shrivel. So how do you know exactly where the neutral is? You just hit selection and it's right in neutral. This is right in the center of that. And if I put on auto, it goes all the way to one side, all the way to the other side. So right now I know it's right in the center. So I can put my horn on there. So there we go, I installed the uh, servo horn and I am in neutral. And if I move it to auto, you can see it's sweet. And I can put it manual. And then I can manually turn this and send it from one side to the other side. And put it back in the center. Voila. Okay, it's time to install the servo. I got all the screws ready and I got the plastic bits ready. And now I have to get the servo in here. So I'll flip this around the right way so I don't do any mistake because the picture is that way and the car is this way. So it's always better to put, to put your car the same way the picture is like that. You make no mistake. So let me drop the servo in there and I'll be right back. So there we go, servos all installed. It was tricky getting the wire in there, but I did get it in there. And uh, everything fits. It fits tight, but everything fits. And everything turns. And the wire is nice and flush. When I put the battery, it won't get squished. And now it's time to put the um, ESC. Okay, there we go. Uh, electronic is installed, uh, receiver is there, ESC is there, I stuck the switch here, that's where they told, said to actually install the switch, so it's glued with two-way tape that they supplied, uh, motor is connected, so everything's there, uh, this will be tied, this is the antenna for the receiver, it's going to be tied to the uh, body post once I install them. So uh, the next step that they mentioned is tires. Foam in tires. So basically, um, you just spread it apart. You don't have to, but you just sl slowly insert and push it into the tire. And as you push, you keep turning and pushing it into the tire. And then everything at the end should match up to the other one. And sometimes you turn it on the other side and you see there's a little bump. So you just make sure you work the foam all the way through and you just push it in. There we go, all installed. Now time to put it on the rim. Putting it on the rim, uh, these tires uh, do not have uh, a direction to them. So it doesn't matter which way you put them, except for the Tamiya lettering. So some people like having the Tamiya lettering outside and the type of tire, the grip. And on the other side, there's none. So it's up to your choice what you want. Me, I do want the lettering to be there. So um, I'll, I'll put it in there. So you just squeeze the tire in there all the way through. And then you just work the bead in. You can just pull on the tire and put the bead in there. And you do the same thing on the other side. Make sure the bead is sitting well and that you don't have any foam that's blocking it somewhere. There we go. Nice little tire, just like that.
for the Tamiya build. Uh, they say that the um, middle stays chrome, but the rest you have to paint them um, white. So I'm actually going to do that. But first, I'm going to put some primer, um, which is the uh, filler primer, onto there so it helps stick better. Uh, I tried sanding it, but the, the groove are t way too much, and there's no way for me to actually uh, sand this down. So hopefully it's going to stick with a good primer. And then we'll paint it white. There we go, primer coat is done. Now I gotta wait till it dries. And then we put some white. There we go, uh, electronics is done, all installed. Um, and now I actually installed some uh, magnets for the body and I've changed the way a little bit I did my magnet which I stick out a little bit so when the other magnet goes on top of it it actually helps for if ever you flip over uh, for uh, magnet shear in other words uh, these magnets are easy to take off if you push them off to the side so this is going to stop it to actually do that so Electronic is all done. Now I'm going to solder a Dean's connector onto here because that's the battery choice that I use for mine. Um, and now, and I painted the nice um, tires, the rims, all the chrome now is all white. So that's going to look nice. And the body is all painted. I did not um, do a video of how to paint the body, but this is the final product. There it is. And I did use um, bond, um, Bondix to actually do the holes. So it actually did a pretty good job. Uh, far away, you can barely tell that uh, there used to be some holes. So I like it. And uh, it makes a big difference. So basically, when you just put this on there, this is one hand. There, it's on. So that's my Herbie the Love Bug. Bug uh, video build. Uh, we'll see you next time, and I'll leave you with some on-road action for Herbie. Thanks, guys. But it's missing something. Rag roof. So I saw some pictures and some people on Facebook and uh, on YouTube that actually did one. Uh, and what he used was actually a canvas. Uh, that's what he told me. So... I basically did a quick template right there. It's going to be 9 centimeter by 9 centimeters, And I did get some canvas material. I took it off of the frame. So I'll be cutting this out. What's nice with this is that, like you saw a little while ago, it has a very nice texture to it. So it's going to be nice and scale onto that. And his looked amazing. And also for the roof... There's little tiny bars there, and those are the bars that go uh, that helps it slide because it actually folds. Uh, this one's going to be fixed. It's going to be fixed but closed. So for this, he said he used toothpicks. So this is what I got, and I'll show you how I actually bent them because you need to be curved. So it needs to be on a curve. Uh, so let me show you how I did this real quick. So I need a little curve on the toothpicks. So what I did is I had this little tree that I was kicking around, good thing. And I, when I put it on, it just gave me the perfect curve. And I'm letting it soak in the hot water here for a little bit. And then it should uh, hold that curve once it dries. So now that uh, the toothpicks will be drying, um, now I have to Turn, uh, cut this a little bit on a uh, circle uh, all the way around to make it look nice and I think 9x9 nine nine is going to look nice up there so and plus I got to mix some white and black to make some gray for the roof and paint away <laughs>